quick. So today I have this Ford F-150 here. It's a 2008. It's a 5.4 liter Triton. I have a bad alternator on this thing. So I've ordered a new alternator and I'm going to have to swap mine out. I had a problem with this thing. I was driving down the road and then all of a sudden my battery light came on and my voltage started dropping right away. So if you're also experiencing this, that little red battery light will come on and you can see the voltage meter right beside it. It says L and H for low and high. That thing was dropping immediately. It should be around 12.4 volts when it's not on and it should be over 13 when it's charging and running. Mine was not doing that, so I don't even know if this... Yeah, so it's not even really starting. So anyways, I know that it's my alternator because it was going low as I was driving. So that means that it's not charging the battery while I'm driving. If it was just not cranking when it's off, then I would look into whether the battery was bad or not. So in this case, I know it's the alternator. I got that and now I'm gonna swap this out. So I'm just gonna walk you through how to do that. The first two things that I'm gonna do is remove the terminals on the battery. You can just remove the the negative will be a eight mil nut. Just remove the negative terminal while you're working with the alternator. Okay, so you can remove the negative terminal off the battery, stick it somewhere where it's not gonna connect itself again. And then we're gonna use some penetrating fluid because I don't know the last time this was off, if ever. I'm just gonna spray all the bolts that I'm gonna be taking off. All right, so you can grab yourself a 10 mil socket and you'll have four bolts on the intake manifold here, or the intake air box, rather. Be two on this side, two on the other side. See? And this is exactly why you use penetrating fluid because you never know when this piece of crap was off. Just lost one of my mounting bolts, but that's okay. Good thing it's my truck. So right here on the intake snorkel here, there's another 10 mil bolt. This one you just have to pretty much loosen and then it can slip out. There's a U-shaped piece of plastic on here. It slips out of this end and it slips out of this end. It's a pretty weird thing it is, but like you just have to pull it and then we'll slide right out of that. You pull it out of this end there and then you can slip it out of this part. So that part can just be pulled out and pulled aside. And then you want to get the intake box off. So the intake box has your mass airflow sensor on it, which is right here. So you want to pull this guy out. Everything is stuck here, man. Holy. So I had to use some penetrating fluid and this little tab slides out. And then you can push the tab there and that will come out like that. So there's that portion. Then there is a crankcase vent, which is right over here. And you slide back that little green tab, loosen it off, and that thing will come right off. The air box will just slide right off it is connected by a zip tie on this little thing here for this uh, I think it's a breather hose not sure exactly what that's for but you can just take that clip off there's your stock box just pull that to the side and then we're gonna get at the alternator in here and make sure that your battery stays disconnected or else you're gonna start throwing some sparks in here okay so before you get too far you have to get a half inch ratchet down in on tensioner pulley right there so I already have it on there it was just kind of tough to jam my hand in there and so what you have to do you take your ratchet so you can see my ratchet right here and you have to push down on it to release the tension and then what's gonna happen is that belt is gonna release the tension and then you'll slip it right off the alternator on top I can't do that with two hands that just shows you how to actually do it yeah it's a half inch ratchet to do that so you slip that off the alternator and if you lose your track of where your belt is or how it goes if you have the 4.6 liter or the 5.4 liter it's that right there so just take a screenshot of that or pause the video if you have a 4.2 liter then it's that diagram right there how the pulley goes if you need that just pause the video and check that out on how to get it back on as you can see the belt is off now that will give you access to your alternator and in my experience of doing these doing alternators in general is to leave the ratchet on leave the belt where it is so that you don't lose the placement of it just do not forget that your ratchet is in that thing or it's gonna smash off your fan when you try to start this thing after now this right here on the top of the alternator is the reason why you disconnect your battery so you take this here here, pop that off with the 10 mil. So now that that terminal is off, pull that off, stick the nut back on it so you don't lose it. Now right underneath that terminal, you have a connector in there. I'm gonna spray it with some penetrating fluid and pop that thing out. Okay, so mine just happens to be stuck in there, so I'm gonna leave that for now. This little bracket here, that can just be popped off me. I don't care, because it's my truck. I'm gonna just pull it out. And then there's 10 mil bolts here. There's two there, two on this side. 
and those have to come off or the top bracket that holds the alternator in. Yeah, guy, I'm telling you, you guys are seeing all the easy stuff right now. Those bolts were on there real good. You just gotta pop off that bracket there. Okay, so that top bracket, <coughs> that top bracket is off now. Take that off. Now there's only two bolts on the bottom. That one right there, that one right there. So pop those off, two 10 mil bolts. Good job. This one here only has to go out so far because it's on a U bracket so it will slip right off of it. So once those are off, this thing can literally slip right out of here. That's your alternator out. I'm gonna disconnect this connector right there. It was stuck before, so I'm just gonna do that off camera real quick and then we'll get the other one slapped back in there. So both of those bottom bolts actually only have to come out part way because they're both U brackets. You can just slip it right off of that. So this is what the back of the connector looks like. So that thing has to come out as as well this little connector moves backwards unhook it and then it'll slide right off and then you can start working on your new alternator okay so this one here is a refurbished alternator there's a core cost to this which is 38 bucks if you return your old one then you get the 38 dollars back so that's a good deal i like those this is my new one compared to the old one it looks super fresh okay so i'm actually going to slip this alternator bolt back in the bottom because that doesn't really actually need to be out what you can do is put some anti-seize on this stuff as you're putting them back in because it will be easier to get it out next time but i forgot mine at my shop and this is just one of these things i have to do in place to be able to actually drive this thing so i'm going to toss this bottom bolt back in just a little bit not all the way obviously so this alternator here comes with a 10 mil bolt for your positive terminal so that's good news you don't have to reuse the other one in case it's rusted out or something so what we're gonna do with this is we're gonna pop it straight back in that just slides right on those two bolts right there so as you can see there there's that one bolt right there there's that other bolt right there so you basically just slide it right on top of that and then you can tighten down those two bolts so now that that bolt that bolt are in I'm gonna put the top bracket back on so this top bracket goes straight on like that just where it was before line the holes up there and then put the four bolts back in okay so those four bolts on the top just have to go back in good job wrench this one wrench that one so now that that bracket's back in and take the nut off that put the connector back in make sure that you hear a click and then put the positive terminal back on stick that 10 mil nut back on it and you're gonna want to tighten that up throw the protective rubber cover on it and then that's done and then stick the wiring harness there back in and then that's all done and now we got to slip that belt back on so it's the reverse thing so you just have to tension that ratchet down there and then slip the belt back on okay so the belts back on the alternator there you want to make sure that the belt is on in everywhere and not off of the pulleys you want to make sure it's on and then make sure that you take your ratchet out of the tensioner pulley down there and then it's just putting the air intake back on okay so you want to put the air intake box back on and then it will slip right on the throttle body there and now is a good time to inspect your air intake filter which mine's probably dirt trash yeah mine's pretty bad I don't have compressed air right now but you want to definitely blow that out with compressed air or just shake it off anyways that didn't do much help so I'm just going to order a new one when the time is right but the time is not now so you want to put this air intake box back on that air intake box is back on now you put the four bolts back in i broke one of mine so it'll be three but i'm gonna put those back in right now okay so now i got that one two three back in that one's broken i'm gonna put the mass airflow sensor back in which is right there make sure you hear a click i'm gonna put the crankcase vent or i don't even know what that is crankcase vent or fuel pressure regulator one of the two that's back on and then this little bracket just slides right on there then from there i just have to put back on the snorkel for that thing and then this thing's good to go okay so this you just have to slide in Milo, watch your head okay and then there's one more bolt right on the top here <laughs> Good job. Okay, so this thing may not necessarily crank over because the battery might be dead, but basically that's all it is. That's how you change an alternator. Last thing you got to do is just put the negative terminal back on and then crank that thing down, 8 mil bolt, and then we just have to try to fire it up. If it doesn't fire, then we'll just charge it a little bit and boost it with my wife's car and then get it going. The negative terminal is back on, so I'm going to try to crank it. Hopefully the battery's not right dead. All right, so now that we got the 
alternator all fixed up and put back together and the battery back together. I'm just gonna test this and see how it actually goes. It should fire up unless the battery's dead, which I don't think that it is. Okay, it's good. Nice. Nice, there you go. So, you can see now this is charging above half, so that means that it's above 13 volts. I don't have a multimeter here to actually go and do electrical testing and seeing how much voltage it's actually charging with, but I know because it's above half, so it will be around 13. So this is good news, it's not dying, the battery light's not on anymore, so it's all fixed up. That's how I knew it was an alternator and not a battery. If you wanna test if the alternator's bad while your vehicle's running, if it does run, you can test it by removing your positive terminal on your battery and if your vehicle dies right away then you know that it's the alternator that's not keeping your truck running because your alternator should be able to keep your truck running when the battery is not connected it doesn't need a closed circuit to be able to do that it can run and function off of the pulley driven alternator so that's how you do it so that's how you fix the 2008 Ford F-150 5.4 liter Triton's alternators so that's the end of the video if you enjoyed this video definitely hit that subscribe button if this video helped you you out and this is a fix to your problem and definitely hit that like button let me know down in the comments if you have any questions or concerns don't forget to hit us up on our discord and our whatsapp server the links are in the description so we'll see you in the next one see you later